going on? <clears throat> See if anybody pops on here, and then uh, I'll get going spewing. Do 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 So anyway, step back sports cards here. Thanks for tuning in. If you're gonna watch this later on, uh, I'm doing it this way uh, simply because my wife is on our MacBook and uh, can't make any videos on my work computer here, so I got to go live, um, which actually I don't mind, so whatever. Um, you know, welcome. Welcome back to the channel. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, pushing me over the 100 subs. That's pretty cool. Uh, if you're watching this for the first time, uh, you know, tune in. Hit the like button, please. Uh, subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that. Uh, you know, I talk a lot of basketball. Um you know, but we, we try to get into all cards as well. Um, so with that being said, I wanted to try something here real quick. Let's see if it works. So give me one second. Uh, da, 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 da. So I'm going to try to share my screen and I can do that. So hallelujah. So I've never done this before on StreamYard. So if the video quality sucks, sorry, but I'll watch it later and, and figure that out. Um, I just wanted to show on, on my channel here, um, up in the banner, there's a couple of different links. And I don't know how many people actually go in and check out people's channels, but I'm kind of a nerd that way. Um, but there's a link to my podcast right here, a link to, uh, our Facebook group. If you'd like to join, feel free. Um, a link to my eBay store, a link to my, my slabs, uh, listings, and then a link to card hedger. Um, and if you click on that link, it's my affiliate link. I do work for card hedger. So, uh, you know. It, it you, if you decide to subscribe, I do get a little cut of that. Um, but anyway, uh, so with that being said, uh, the first thing I'd like to do, uh, quick mail day. Uh, actually, it's not really quick, but I haven't done one in a while uh, just because my purchases have been a little spread out. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Um, but anyway, uh, I got these in from my boy, uh, JJ uh, Michelin out in Michigan. Let's say that three times fast. Um, but if you've been watching the channel for a little while um, or know me at all, you know I PC uh, Kevin Garnett and Michael Jordan uh, and a little bit of Ray Allen. But uh, I get he picked this up the other day. So the glare is going to suck, but that's a KG Rockstars. Uh, 97 or 96 tops. This is the refractor version. So I don't know if you can see that. That glare is terrible. Uh, but really cool card. I will send that out to get graded at some point. I just don't know when. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, this is a cool little insert from uh, Flair. Old, just regular Flair. I thought it was Ultra. But Towers of Power. Nothing too crazy, but again, and, and something like that, I don't know if I'll grade right away, but we'll see down the line. But the Rockstar's Refractor will definitely. Uh, I did show this card off before, and I had to actually update it in my uh, PSA set registry. It's just a cool card. 96, 99 Flare Showcase, um, guaranteed fresh insert. Uh, Flare Showcase is one of my favorite sets in the 90s. Uh, these cards are just awesome. So grab that one. Uh, then JJ, again, uh, he actually sent me this one. 
just because he likes me. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's a 2007 8 Topps Chrome uh, KG refractor out of 9.99, and this one got an SGC nine. So this card's sick, and it's when he was playing for the Celtics, so it's even better. Um, pretty cool. So thank you, JJ, for that. Uh, next, I got uh, these are my two most recent purchases. Uh, two out of the three most recent purchases. Uh, but this first one is a 97 Finest Kevin Garnett Refractor. Uh, and this one is serial numbered 282 out of 289. Uh, so you can kind of see that in the back. These things are rare. They're hard to find. Um, I got this at a good price. Paid 100 bucks for this. Um, I think that was a pretty good price. Top corner is dinged on this, so you can see why I got a 9. Uh, but anyway, that went into the old, this actually bumped my set registry up from six to five or seven to, I'm sorry, seven to six. So that was pretty cool. Pretty cool ad. Uh, this next one is going to be, this is a, going to be a straight flip. Um, I bought two of these, uh, for whatever reason, it's, it's probably one of the coolest Air Jordan cards there are. It's my favorite card. Um, but they're on fire. Uh, so I grabbed two 88 Flare All-Stars. Uh, this one I grabbed PSA 8. Uh, I bought this Tuesday morning uh, for $410. And they're already selling at like five something, $600. Um, so this was a straight flip play. Uh, this, this card's crazy right now. I also bought this card in an SGC seven. Uh, I paid two fifty for that one, which was I think probably set a new comp high at that SGC seven. Um, that one I'll keep, uh, you know, unless it, the price continues to rise. Which you know, some good stuff with SGC is is they're they're narrowing the the gap again, and and I'll talk a little bit about some of the things I see. Um, but and then I just wanted to show like I've shown these before, but these were like uh, I don't know how I even got on this kick back in December, but I set a goal. I knew I was I, I wanted the star Jordan cards and how I kind of operate is when everybody's focused in on one card or a set of cards. So, like, give you an example, 86 Flair Jordan, that card is – or the 86 sticker. Um, I don't know why I didn't buy that card when it was, you know, like three, dollars $400, like literally like an hour ago. Um, it's now thousands of dollars, um, which, you know, in the grand scheme of pricing of cards, it's probably not crazy. It's not crazy. Um, it's a low-pop card. Um, it's Michael Jordan, um, you know. And there's a lot of things working for it and it, it it's taken off. Um, but rather than pay the premiums as a card literally rises by like the auction, um, I, I look where people aren't looking and, or talking. Um, so I, I started focusing on rookie year star cards and I realized real quick, you know, card 101, the XRC, uh, that's going to take me a little while to grab one. Um, but I, I dialed in and the, the other three. Um, so the first one I bought back in December was card number 180, 195. Sorry, I get these confused. BGS 7. And I paid the time $700 for this. And one just sold for like $15.49, um, like literally a week ago. So. Um, these cards are starting to pick up some steam and I would have a better way to show these again, but I'm on a different computer. So I got to do it the chooch way and I apologize. Uh, from there, I turned my attention to the, one of the other cards in the set and I grabbed number 288 in a BGS five and a half. And if you're new and you've never seen these cards before so these are from jordan's actual rookie year 1984 86 is not his rookie year 
and these cards are legit. Beckett's the only company that grades them. Um, GAI actually does too, but you know, whatever. Uh, Beckett holds the weight. So Beckett grades these, and, and if you find them in a Beckett slab, as long as the slab is legit, uh, you've got yourself a rare card. I paid six seventy five dollars for this one. Uh, this card's taken off as well. Um, again, with these, the subs on this one, the centering got a four and a half, corners eight and a half, edges eight, surface eight. So realistically, the centering is so bad, but – if you look at all of these cards, like this centering is a six. So they're all piss poor centered, um, but I have not seen anything kind of close to a five and a half sell in a little while. I got to assume that's got to be eight, nine hundred bucks if I wanted it. Probably a thousand if I put it up there. And then the last big purchase or I'd say big, big purchase of 2020. Um, the Court Kings of the 84, 85 star. Um, many people will tell you, and, and it's it's out there on the old interweb if you want to you know, cross-check my, my facts spewing. Um, this was the first Michael Jordan card there was. And it's in a five by seven. And I got this in a six and a half. And the subs on this centering is eight and a half edges are an eight and a half corners are a six and this bottom corner down here got a little crease in it and the surface is an eight these things are so rare all three of these cards the pops on them are uh, on the red one 188 i think the pops like 700 or so and then on the other two there's like 400 and 400 total they're super super low pop cards um and this one, this is just sick. The picture, I mean, it's just iconic. So to me, this thing is now taken off. Um, I paid eight fifty, and we had a seven sell a few weeks ago for three thousand. And there's a six on auction right now at PWCC. So I'm really curious to see what that does. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So pretty happy with my purchases. Um, you know, that, that's kind of what I've been doing. Jordan KG, Jordan KG. I go back and forth. Uh, obviously, you can get more KG cards than you can Jordan uh, for, for the bang for your dollar. But it's not always necessarily about quantity. Uh, you know, it's, it's quality. You know, trying to find the rarer things, the things that, you know, are harder to track down. Um, that will sustain a little bit of value long-term. Um, I like that chase. I like finding things that people may not know too, too much about and then having to like, explain it to them. Um, and then they think you're full of shit and then they go and do their own research and they're like, Oh yeah, that card you were talking about. Um, so can you tell me a little bit more? Um, that, that's the kind of stuff I like. So, um, all right. So I put in the title, I wanted to talk a little bit about card sales. I'm going to share my screen again. So this is card hedger. This is my dashboard. Um, this, this feature up here, which tracks like your purchase green is what you've spent. Blue is your, your potential value of your collection based off actual sales or, or sales that have not happened yet. Um, you know, back this, this, these guys pumped this out, uh, December 29th, right around, right after Christmas, start of the new year. So you can see there. And what's nice about this is I can sign in every once in a while and see, and then, you know, right around middle of January here, Martin Luther King day cards took off again and they've been on this upward trend for a good 10 days now. Um, and you can see, you know, the blue separating from the green, um, so one of the nice things I like about this, though, I, I don't really care about this. And, and this is nice to know that, like, you know, the value of the things I buy have gone up. But this is the feature I like the most. I can click on this, this unrealized profit. So this means cards I've bought have gone up or are, there's a new comp that's higher than the price I paid. And this unrealized profit shows that I have $2,290 potentially sitting in cards 
that I have in my collection. So when I click on that, it brings you into your collection and then it shows you the cards that have sold and starts with the highest and works its way down. So you can see there's that Jordan I was talking about. Uh, this 87 Flare Jordan, I mean, SGC 8, almost a grand. Um, SGC 8 and a, eight and a half, an 88 Flare, you know, 475. LeBron's finally moving in the right direction. KG's up. So, I mean, look at this, 512. So, I mean, in a day, I made $100. Um, this card will be $1,000 by, I would think, next week or the week after. Uh, so, at the way things are going. Shaq, I talked about this in one of my pre prior videos. This trade card, you know, if you can still get in on a nine at a buck 28, if you look at the prices of the tens, uh, it's a huge gap. So these nines are the play. Uh, so me and a couple of my buddies bought some. But what I wanted to talk about here, card prices, right? They're, they're out of control. And I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, you know, they're getting or they're they're either getting or they're at the point of stupidity. Uh, and it's starting to raise a red flag um, because, you know, when you see stuff like this, right, 1,283%, this Kevin Porter Jr. base prism has gone up in 14 days. So let's look at this. Okay. So Kevin Porter Jr., right? He's he's okay, I guess. He's okay. This thing in 90 days, look at this. Back here in November, this card was $83. $83. Today, almost 1000. And actually, uh, that's a so no, never mind, never mind. So there's a bad sale, so that's gonna come out. That's wrong. This whole thing is wrong. See that filters. That's another thing to talk about live and on 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 air is, you know, that's why it's it's worth it to check and recheck and and really make sure you look at the data before you go spewing it out, uh, you know, here, there, and everywhere. This card, though, this I know is is accurate, right? 87 flare. So Jordan's fourth year um, by his actual career. Uh, many people consider this card his second year card, um, but it's actually his fourth year card. This card, I, I've been watching it forever, was like 10 grand in November. 45 thousand dollars somebody paid for this pwcc and you know you can say what you want pwcc whatever but listen they they get the cash and you're only giving them eight percent so you're giving them you know you're making what an extra four percent by using them rather than selling through ebay yourself if I'm not mistaken, they take 8% over anything over $5,000. So, you know, if you run an eBay store with and you're a top rated seller, I think you're at like 11%. So you're getting three extra percent. That's, that, that's a big chunk of change out of a $45,000 sale. Anyway, look at this. This card is, is on freaking fire. Um, you know, a nine. 4,300 and that may not even be, you know, these are, these are buy it nows and, and auction prices. These aren't all best offers and things like that because those are hard to track and, and data can be screwed, skewed eights. So PSA eight, 1300 bucks. BGS eight thousand bucks. SGC eight thousand bucks so while PSA is up here at like 13 and it's it could even be a little bit more maybe like 16 depending on buy it now best offer type stuff BGS and SGC are 
essentially the same price on this card. All right. Um, and that's good to see, guys. Why is that good to see? You want to see that money spread out over these three grading companies. Because if we just sit up here in PSA land, eventually what's going to happen is it, it's just going to price everybody out or you're going to be paying, you know, thousands of dollars for a three. Um, and, and, you know, is that realistic on a fourth year card? I don't know. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't do that. But, um, you know, so with with that being said, right, um, let's look at this real quick. Here's Zion. So I do not own anything Zion, but since, you know, he's the hot speculative buy of, of all flippers, investors, whoever trying to make a dollar, um, PSA 10s are at 600. All right. If you look, and it's a consistent 600, that, that's cool, but this card's actually down. So if you go... You know, 625, 635, right? There's, yeah, there's a 645, 646. So this card is down, you know, 50 bucks from yesterday, um, which is interesting. But then if you come over here, now this is where it's starting to get interesting again. These last two sales, 500, 450. Best offer by Investicard. And then an auction. Normally, SGC on auction, and this is a PWCC one. Normally, you know, it's going to bring what forty percent of a PSA, BGS, whatever. I don't know why SGC just doesn't do well in auctions, but I've been saying it forever. Um, but that's starting to close the gap again. This sale right here at five hundred. And you look at the last PSA sale of 600, this is actually at an 83% clip, um, you know, as far as a comp goes to PSA. I don't know about you guys, but I'd take that, you know. Um, then we have Kobe, right? This Kobe. Look at this. On the 26, we had an SGC 96 or an SGC 9 set of a, EX 2000, Stardate 2000, super, super awesome Kobe card from rookie year insert, um, super condition sensitive, 44, 4,500, I'm calling it 4,500 on Tuesday. At the time of that sale, going on here, I don't want that, sorry. At the time of that sale, so that was on the 26th, it had sold for more than a PSA 9. Okay, then, you know, the gods of PSA come in. It, it never fails. You can ask anybody. If there's a high SGC sale, then PSA, like, sells almost immediately for a little bit more. And there you go. So sold for $500 more the next day. And then, now this is what will screw people up because they don't pay attention. What What do you mean? Now this card sold for $72.50? Well, it's sold in Australian dollars. So this is actually fifty five hundred bucks, five thousand five hundred sixty dollars to be exact. So this sold for five thousand five hundred and sixty American dollars. So again, another day it went up five hundred bucks because it's it's a it's a rare Kobe card. But my point is, these cards aren't far off now. Okay, there was a time where this card and the other card this would have been three thousand. And this would have been five thousand, and that was that was like yeah, but now we're at forty five and five. Uh, I can live with that, um, and it's it's getting better by the day. Um, so, you know, why do I think that's happening? I'll tell you why. Um, there's upwards of a five million card backup now at PSA. Um, there's no more economy level service. They're trying to get you to go through uh, like group submitters, which, you know, I, I bulk submit with uh, SGC. Um, it, if you find someone you trust, by all means, do it. 
Um, but a lot of people don't like to hand their cards off to another person. And I, I totally get that. Um, luckily for me, I don't have that problem. I have, I have a guy that I trust. Um, and if you're looking for someone to bulk submit uh, to SGC, uh, I would highly recommend Bobbles and Ball Cards. Uh, great dude. Uh, he takes care of everything for you. So, and uh, SGC is not taking bulk submissions right now. If you're wondering, um, from what I hear and read and whatnot, uh, they're not going to start that up again till March. Uh, and the pricing for that won't come out till probably around the time they release it, um, or open back up for that. From what I understand, they're literally trying to get every single card out of the building, um, before they open back up for bulk submissions and things like that. Um, pretty lofty goal, but they're, they're pumping cards out guys, uh, between Bobbles and Boca Raton, uh, submitting group, you know, there's 10,000 cards since August between the two, uh, they're all back. So SGC places a priority on bulk submissions where the other companies don't. I personally like that because I like to send a lot of cards at once. Um, I don't like to just send one or two cards at a time. Um, so for me, that works out great for other people. They may say that's the stupidest goddamn thing I've ever heard. And okay, whatever. Um, but PSA is running like, you know, 50 to a hundred dollars a card, uh, for long, long time. I have two orders at PSA. Uh, I did an economy order right before they stopped taking economy orders and it hasn't moved in three months. Um, and I forget even what economy submission level was 45 days or something like that 60 days i don't even know um whatever it is it's way past it um and i have a bulk order which i submitted and i don't expect back till like my 45th birthday um that's five years from now so uh people are people are complaining so this is the this is why i think the prices with bgs and sgc are coming back up uh in line with psa there's no PSA stuff coming to the market. It's all in backlog and slowly coming out. So as 5 million cards sit there, that's that's impossible to work through as you're continuing to accept new cards. And, I, and again, I don't work there. I don't know. I'm just picturing this in my mind. If I had a backlog of 5 million potatoes, I can't get rid of 5 million potatoes if trucks are still coming in dumping potatoes so at some point i either have to say stop sending me stuff and i need to work through they could they, they could not take a card again for for a, a while um and then people say well yeah what about profits that's bad for business well psa doesn't charge you until they grade your cards so they have five million cards sitting there of basically dead money kind of weird um, you know, and, and there are people that don't like paying up front like SGC does. Um, I don't mind it because it's like you pay it and it's gone. You don't have to worry about it again in a few months. Make sure you have the cash. Um, you know, I don't know about you guys, but not the greatest money saver in the world. So sometimes, you know, you get a $500 bill for card grading and you're like, ah, shit. But that, that's, that's realistically what I think is going on. Um, I also think that PSA slabs are starting to outprice the average Joe. Um, you know, if I can get on eBay or my slabs or whatever, and I'm looking for a specific card, uh, I'll look for it. I'll start BGS, depending on if it's a Jordan. Um, and then if it's a KG, I'll either go, you know, PSA first because I'm looking for set registry stuff. But then if I can find it in SGC, um, I'll buy the SGC. Uh, A, because I like the, the, the card. Um, and B, I generally prefer the look of the card in the SGC slab. Um, the aesthetic pieces is important to me. Um, you know, I do like to look at them. My son and I check them out. So, you know, he, he likes to look at them. Um, but that, that's what works for me. Now I have nothing against PSA. Just, you know, this isn't like some kind of anti PSA rate or uh, rant, but at some point I just think that people say enough is enough. Um, you know, we are in a pandemic still. It's crazy that we're still in a pandemic and you hear all this stuff about the economy. 
and card prices are just they're just crazy. So to me, like something has to give. You know, it, it's 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 almost like the dot com uh, era back in the nineties uh, when I was in high school. It, you know, everybody was buying dot com stocks, and then I everybody realized, oh shit, uh, these stocks suck. These companies suck, and the market collapsed. Now. I don't know with cards here. It's still a little early. I think we're going to have to watch this over the next year to see how things unfold. Um, I do. I have noticed a, a, a big uptick in sales prices of Hall of Fame guys. Um, you know, the Jordans, the Pippins, the Iversons. Uh, Iverson's been red hot, by the way, people. Um, you know, and I've noticed that, you know, the other dudes uh, like Zion, Trey, Luca, whatever, their, their prices are either down or haven't risen much, which is interesting. Um, you know, Luca's a hell of a player. He's yet to do anything, uh, and I don't think he's going to do anything this year. Uh, LeBron's prices were down forever. Um, you're exactly right, Wade. So this is this is a big one right here. When people can spend money on the casinos, vacations, movies, et cetera, the card market will slow. Absolutely. You know, there's there's not a lot we can do right now. Depending on where you are in the country, I'm up in the Northeast. We can't do a goddamn thing up here. Like, there's no card shows. There's, like, eight people allowed in a restaurant. You, you can't do this. You can't do that. Um, it's, it's crazy. And, you know, you go to... Florida, it's wide open. You can do whatever you want. Um, so that piece, you know, I'd be curious if you could see like a breakdown of state by state, <laughs> excuse me, you know, how, how card sales, if there was a way to do that, I, I'm, you know, there's probably not, but it'd be interesting to see anyway, just card sales breakdown by state. Um, you know, as you get that freedom back to do other things, I, I have to assume by 20, 20, end of this year, next year. Um, what up, Nats man? Uh, especially like 2022, I, I think there's going to be a definite downtrend as more people get vaccinated, uh, and hopefully the the Rona goes away. But I don't know. What the hell do I know? I'm not a not an economist. I'm just a dude. Um, you know. So my buddy Nats man, if you haven't checked out his channel, go check him out, man. He's uh, Dirty South Productions. He's got a big old beard. He wears his national shit. Yeah, he's great. He's great. Good personality. Um, and he's always drinking. Like, I always wonder what he's drinking. And it's got to be like peach tea. Has to be. Um, you know, but good stuff over on his channel. Go check it out. Uh, big baseball dude. Um, so, anyway, that's where I'm at, guys. Um, you know, I, I just really feel that. The market is is just to a point where uh, people are starting to get, you know, over or whatever it is, overpriced, outpriced, whatever. Um, I know for me, I was talking last night to a couple guys, and I've actually started to look at baseball cards again, which would be interesting. I almost <laughs> pulled the trigger like three times last night on, on a couple baseball cards. Um, I almost bought some hockey the other night as well. Um so we'll see what happens. 2021 will be, uh, you know, an interesting year. Need more info on MJ cards. What do you want to know, Mike? We can talk MJ. All, uh, the problem is, is I've been on for 35 minutes and I'll talk MJ all night. So uh, I can do plenty of videos on MJ, but I love MJ. Did you see the cards I showed earlier, Mike? Wait for it. Wait for it. It's the only thing that sucks about these videos is it's not like live. It'd be better if it was like Zoom and people just shouting at each other. Um, Mike, the bottom line on MJ cards is is this. Uh, they're all going up. <laughs> like, it's, it's seriously like they've been shot out of a freaking cannon. Um, and it honestly doesn't matter. You know, 88 flare 89 flare is starting to see or is now seeing a major uptick um the inserts are crazy 
So like for me, like what I've been doing, you know, everybody goes to, um, you know, beam team and things like that. And those, those prices have risen a uh, couple hundred bucks in the last month or so. So I'm looking at other stuff. I, I really try to do some serious research before I buy something. Uh, I did just buy a BGS nine 91 skybox Canadian mini uh, Michael Jordan. So whenever that crosses the border and gets to my house, I'll be sure to show that, but it's a pretty cool card minis and they're rare. There's like 120 of them total graded between BGS and PSA. So that's a 91 skybox uh, Canadian mini, not the regular mini Canadian mini. Um, so I look for stuff like that. Um, there he is. The Wu Tang clan is in the house. Um, so Bobbles, I gave you a shout out, man, for uh, group subs. So I expect a 59% commission on all subs. Thank you. Uh, Nats, man, I was so close last night to buying an 84 Flair Update Roger Clemens rookie card. It was not even funny. Uh, real close. <laughs> like, like real close. Um, I love the rocket. But, uh, you know, anyway, um, Mike, if in, in all seriousness, man, some of the star cards are still, you know, under a grand. And if you can grab one, do it. I wouldn't worry about the grade. One thing with MJ, he's like grade immune. So, you know, you, you saw, like, give me an example. Bobbles, I'm going to use you as an example. Bobbles bought a PSA 4 MJ back in, I think, October for, let's say, $2,000. That card is now like over $5,000 on auction, right? And it's still going with like three days left. And we were, Bobbles and I were looking last night. Um, it, it, it just doesn't matter if you just got to get your hands on something um, and hold it for a little while. And if you're into it for, for making money right now, you can't go wrong. Um, I can show you some more graphs. What do you want to see, Mike? Here, you know what? Here's a good one, Mike. The 89 starting lineup one-on-one. -on -one. This card's super rare. So a PSA 10 just sold uh, for like six Gs, right? PSA 9 just sold today for 423. So, you know, there's that's still a pretty, what's that, a 15 times? I can't do math. 15 times multiplier between the nine and the 10. And I think there's like 40 nines out there. So if you can find your, you know, a nine, even an eight, hop on one. Um, Cause the tens are, you know, crazy money. Um, I'll tell you what, Mike, I don't want to bore everybody on this like this. I'll make another video um, and do some MJ stuff. Uh, Cause I like to do it. I don't have a problem doing that. Yeah, me too, Bobbles. It's crazy, man. Um, you know, I don't know where else you can, you know, unless you're like gold mining and, and gold mining is is mad expensive, um, you know, but if there's really nothing other than, you know, shorting the market with GameStop and that whole scheme that's going on today, um, it, it's crazy the, 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 you know, and it's got a lot of attention. Um yeah, seriously. Uh, Tops Chrome Kobe. All right. Doo, doo, doo. Give me a sec. You got to switch screens, Bobble. So if he's typing stuff, you give me a second. I can't see. That's not. I typed Kobe. Any uh, any particular grade bobbles? Jesus Christ! Look at this! <laughs> Look at this! Thirty-two thousand dollars in a ten. This card, I swear, the last time I looked at it, and because I knew I'd never own it, was like uh, 
5,500 maybe. <laughs> Look at that. $32,000 two days ago. No, today. Holy shit. Today. PWCC. $32,000. Dizam. We got a grade. Oh, you said 2008 Chrome. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Hang on. That one's not in there. I got to do it over here. Any particular uh, company? Uh, base car. You're talking about the Jordan? You talking about the Jordan Olympic card? I assume. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, Bobbles. I'm bringing it up raw. Hang on. Four fifty. Damn. Three fifty. Hundred dollars in a day. I'm gonna love that. Hundred dollars in not even an hour. Look at that one. PSA 10, 7,500 bucks. PSA 9, 1,600. Jesus Christ. BGS 9, 1,100. So, like, that's what makes me laugh. It's the same damn card. 1,200? 1,700. Like, whatever. Whatever. Um, base card, you still there, buddy? I didn't see you. Uh, I'm assuming he means the Jordan. You mean this, like this one? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, exactly, Bobbles. I remember you telling me that. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. Base card. This guy? Is that what you're talking about? I don't know. If you're there, let me know. Well, yeah, dude, GameStop is out of control. And that's the thing, like, Bobbles, like, we've talked a thousand times about, you know, prices where they were. Like, when you had some Luca cards and, like, literally had paid, like, next to nothing for them and then sold them and you're like, oh, okay. And, you know, you made a good profit. And now it's like, you know, you know, some of these things are thousands of dollars. It's, it's just, I don't know. On the modern, the ultra modern stuff, I just don't understand it. I really don't. Uh, you know, I, I will say, like, on the Jordan and the, the, the studs of the past, you know, Magic Bird, uh, God, you know, uh, why can't I think of his name? Chamberlain, Bill Russell. I mean, so I, now, one thing I always argue with my buddy about is he's not into vintage anything. Like, he totally feels that – the the era we grew up in, everything is basically starts starts there, and I'm like, huh, doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Um, he he kind of discredits basketball back in the day. Um, you know, I, he always like he's like, dude, do you think Bill Russell could guard Shaq? Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Bill Russell was tall. I don't I don't. Shaq is a friggin' freak, so I don't know. David Robinson couldn't guard Shaq. I, I, how the hell's I don't know. Um, and then, you know, baseball stuff, we always would argue about, like, you know, Babe Ruth. Like, yeah, <laughs> I have to laugh because, like, Babe Ruth was like, you know, Griffey would run circles around him all day. But if you get your hands on a Babe Ruth card, it's pretty damn cool, right? You know, it's so old and how many of them are out there? Um, yeah, your Kareem hasn't moved much. Yeah, that's see, look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Where'd it go? So back in October, Bobbles, Bobbles struck oil. Um, he was at a card show and uh, he traded a guy, a hot pretzel, two grand and like some 1987 Valentine's day cards. And he left with a Kareem rookie, uh, a Jordan rookie 
uh, I don't know, a, a Gretzky rookie, a Walter Payton rookie, Magic Johnson drove him in the car. It was, it was, it was insanity. Um, and look at that. Jordan has tripled from Kareem. So it's, it's interesting how these go. So like, I, I, I think if it were me, like Jordan went nuts during the last dance and then he, he went down, right. Or he loved, I shouldn't say went down, but plateaued. And then the vintage stuff like Bobbles was talking about with Kareem that went nuts for a little while. So like, you know, are there ebbs and flows? Yep. Um, I, I think like, you know, Bobbles is the way Bobbles does stuff. And if you haven't checked out his channel, um, on some of my playlists on my older videos, I have like Nats man's videos, Bobbles videos, um, cards, guns, and collectible out in the West coast. Cause you know, you gotta have a West coast guy in your playlist. Um, but check out some of his videos. Like, um, he, he doesn't, these guys do it right, man. Like, you know, they're, they're getting, selling the ultra modern to get the studs. Um, you know, it, it takes time, but it's fun. Um, and you know, you don't have to go bananas if you do it right. And, and you pay attention. Um, Babe Ruth said the best natural born baseball player he ever saw was shoeless Joe. All right. I don't disagree. I mean, I never saw a shoeless Joe, but Hell, he was in Field of Dreams, which is like the greatest movie ever, right? Um, so I'll I'll, I'll I'll take that, Nats. But for me, you know, to get off topic here and talk baseball for a minute, my favorite player of all time was Nomar Garcia Parra. Uh, favorite, favorite player. Um, and then I'd have to put Big Poppy and then Roger Clemens and Pedro. Um, and then Griffey. But... Griffey was different because he was like, he was like the Michael Jordan of baseball. He, he changed baseball um, as far as popularity goes. He's still swinging a wooden bat. Um, yeah, Ruth, <laughs> Ruth was smoking stogies and eating buffalo wings before they were buffalo wings, and and sipping whiskey in the dugout. You know, um, yeah, base card. So to get back, just to get back to what base card is asking here, he's asking about thoughts dude i don't know if you saw what i put up i paid i have i have this card in the seven i paid seven hundred dollars for this in december it just sold same exact grade for like just under 1600 bucks uh low pot man one company grades them uh there's not a whole hell of a lot of them out there i hate wade boggs man i hate wade boggs um, you know, I, I, I love the star stuff. Um, love them. Um, if you can grab another one, grab another one. Um, that's what I would, and I wouldn't worry about the grade because what I've noticed with the star stuff, anything eight and a half and a nine are huge money. Um, because of the centering stuff, they're, they're just so hard to find. Um, so I wouldn't worry about a grade. I just, if I can find it and I can afford it, I'm buying it. Um, I missed out on another court Kings and was like a three and a half. Um, I made an offer, which I thought was fair. And the guy turned me down and he accepted, he got full asking price of 900 bucks. I was like, damn. Um, so whatever, you know, it is what it is. Now Boggs, I, I Boggs, man, Boggs was such a douche. Um, Clemens was the guy, uh, that everybody loved and believe it or not, everybody loved Jody Reed. Um, you know, I was a big Ellis Burks guy. I couldn't stand Wade Boggs. I just couldn't stand him. Um, yeah. Shaq rules, dude, we got to get that thing up a little bit more though. I'd like to see it pick up some steam. Um, I actually keep forgetting I have it. And then that's why I don't mind. I like looking at that collection piece because it reminds me that I have it to sell. It's a cool card though. Um, so Nats man was in on, if you, if you haven't, if you didn't watch from the get go and you scroll back to the beginning, I talked about a little play, um, me, Nats man, and uh, a couple other buddies that aren't on YouTube or whatnot, uh, some Shaq trade cards. I noticed that the PSA 10 in the trade card, 92 upper deck. So number one B was at like $1,300. Um, and there are, I don't know, $1,600. It was crazy. 
Um, and there were a couple of sales at that price. And I went and looked at the nine and the nine was at like $50. Um, so I bought one right away for $56. Uh, and then I messaged Nat's man. I said, Hey, I don't really ever, you can ask anybody. I don't really ever say like, you should buy this. Um, but I felt like on that card, that was like, couldn't go wrong for 50 bucks. Um, I think he got two, my buddy grabbed two. Um, and they're up over 125 bucks now. So they're moving, but I'd like to see them go a little, little, a little bit more, but slow and steady, you know, that, that wins out at the end of the day. All right, fellas, listen, I've been on here for 50 minutes. Holy crap. Um, that's the end of this for the night. If you like what you're seeing, if you made it this far, God bless you. Thanks for listening. Um, please hit the thumbs up button. And uh, if you have not already subscribed to the old channel, please do so. Uh, I would appreciate that. Uh, to the eight of you that stuck it out and, and watched my ugly mug, I appreciate that. And uh, I will be back soon with another video. So until then, good luck, happy hunting, and let me know in the comments what you're buying.